my favourite memories are, um, are quite simple. It's the very first day of the season. Uh, uh, just the expectation of the season starting. Um, because I enjoy it so much, um, I, I really get wound up and excited about that first day. I'm a 65 year old farmer. I've been farming all my life and all I've ever wanted to do from as far back as I can remember is farm. I'm only doing it for a hobby now. I don't need to do it. I could retire gracefully and live happily ever after. But if I did that, we'd get divorced the next day because we got on each other's nerves. So I'll carry on farming for the time being. I intend to carry on farming while I get carried off the place. It's all I ever wanted to do. It's my whole life, my hobby, my whole interest. And my whole life revolves around it and always has done and always will do. All my friends are involved in farming and that's just how it is. When did you start shooting then? I started shooting about the same time, when I was five. I got a little air rifle, a BSA Meteor 177 yeah. and I would shoot everything with that. We had a Jack Russell dog when you I was about 14 years old. You didn't shoot that as well? No, oh, right, and it would, it would carry lumps of coal in its mouth and I used to shoot those lumps of coal yeah, out of its mouth. Right Daniel Craig. Actually, that's a bottle. Get on then. Oh dear, oh well, nothing's changed. Oh, no, that, see, that's you. Then. There's the two cartridges. That's you then. But I remember when you first started shooting here with us, you couldn't hit a barn door. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Not seriously. <laughs> and then you got the nickname Bag Filler because you would shoot everything. Good shot now, you see. So they call his nickname is Bag Filler because he fills the bag. Not yeah. that he's a greedy shot and shoots your birds. I like to if I can. He does, yeah. Mm. The main reason I go shooting is the enjoyment of the sport. It just so happens that the social side is part of that. It's only part of the whole day, meeting other people, meeting other dogs, seeing wildlife, seeing the countryside, seeing the weather in its different forms. It all adds up to a good day in the field. In the morning we go to Mount Pleasant, which is a hotel, go for a full cup breakfast and that's how your day starts. You, you tell people what you've done in the past two weeks, etc, etc. So it's just a very laid back breakfast. An expensive one. Yeah, 12, <laughs> 12 quid, it could be £3.50. So the day starts now meeting at the, at the Mount Pleasant Hotel, where I have an opportunity to tell people any general rules or things. We did we want to do it on that day or not want to do it. I'd only tell them which drive you're going to. I would just run through the drive and what, what's expected of them. The, 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 the atmosphere on a shoot day is just amazing. The adrenaline runs very high um, no matter what aspect of shooting that you're involved in, whether it's a beater, a picker up a gun or an organiser or just quite simply an observer. It's just a fabulous, fabulous spectacle to uh, observe and be part of and never forget it. My role in the shoot day is captain, boss. On a shoot day you'll have probably 14 or 15 beaters, four or five people picking up and, f and eight to ten people with guns. One person has to know what everybody's doing for safety reasons. Guns are made to kill and they do kill. And you have to have somebody responsible who knows what he's doing to make sure everybody's in the, in the right place at the right time and all the safety rules are observed. I don't stand any nonsense. If I see anybody larking about with a gun, it doesn't matter if it's my oldest best friend, he's off down the road. And I've had to do that over the years when I've stood seen people shoot, shooting recklessly. When you start in the morning, we, we have eight guns, and those eight guns have to know where they're going in the day. So we, we give them a number, and one way of giving them a number is to give them a shot of gin or slow gin in the morning, 
with a number on the glass. So they pick the, they pick the uh, glass up and there's a number on it. And if they're number one, they're on number one peg. And then the next stand, they might be number, we'll move them up to number two or number four. If you're number one all day, you're at the end of the line, you're out of the shooting. So we, we rotate the numbers up to make sure people have their fair shooting throughout the day. Me, me and Dale shoot together, by the way, you might have gathered this. So um, he's a very lucky lad because there's not many sons get to go shooting with their dad. So you're, you're one up on most people there, aren't you? Well, yeah, I am, suppose, yeah. yeah. And it, it does work, obviously. The social side with all the guns, we're always taking the mic out of each other throughout the day. But we're not stood together side by side through the day because when you're on your peg, yeah. as it's called, you're 50 to 100 yards. Sometimes Dale can be at one end of the drive and I'll be at the other and there'll be half a mile between us. The closest we'll get is, what, 50 yards apart. But yeah. then after the shoot, obviously, everybody walks together and has a chat, makes a fuss of the dogs, takes the mickey or says, well done, and you move on. It's just nice to be there, isn't yeah. it? And it's different, like, when you get to Dad's age, mid-50s getting on and, and grey, you, you wouldn't be able to do uh, a lot of sports what, what you would do when you were younger. So game shooting's a... It's a level. You yeah, you can yeah, go right up to your 80-year-old. But it is good to have a father and son on the same yeah. shoot, I suppose, at times. Sh shooting is a little bit of a closed shop. Unless you're in with people, um, you can't get in. I mean, people die to get out of my shoot. There's seven names on that board there that are not here anymore. That, that was the shoot. That was done in 1992, that picture. They gave me it for Christmas. The seven signatures on there are now not, not here. And so it's hard to get in a shoot, get into a shoot, when uh, you've got to wait for somebody to, da to die. Because people that are in that don't don't drop out. Why would they? You know, no, nobody ever drops out of my shoot here. The shoot definitely would be wouldn't be the same without the characters. We're all characters in our own way. Some of us don't think we are characters, but we are. In the last two years, I've lost two of our. Our, two of our shoot members, and, and they were, well, they were the heart and soul of the shoot. One especially, Lenny. The whole, the whole shoot revolved round him, really. Lenny could shoot ten birds and hit them, and nobody would say anything. But if Lenny missed one, it would go right down the line. Hey, oh, Lenny's missed one. Lenny's missed one. And he'd hear, well, well, and it just revolved round him. And these characters are just irre irreplaceable. But you have to put a brave face on it and carry on for the rest of them, as best you can. You can't miss this one now. You're going to make a name for yourself. I've got a different gun today. I'm You're going to have a YouTube. YouTube. Gun, you see? A YouTube special. Chris Goodall is a character in his own right. Chris and Lenny were like Tom and Jerry or Eddie and Biddy. They were always at each other. They liked to shoot at each other's birds, because that, if you see a pheasant coming and you're going to shoot it, and somebody else shoots it, that's a big no-no in shooting, and it normally gets you thrown off the shoot. Chris Goodall used to like doing that to Lenny. And if Chris wasn't shooting, he used to stand with Lenny and say, come on, Lenny, Lenny shoot it then, shoot it then, shoot it then, and put Lenny off. And Lenny used to say it was like having a big monkey on his shoulder. He is a nightmare, yeah. Bag he's, a, filler. he's a good Goody. nightmare. He's he's good not, nightmare. No, he's not a good nightmare. If he stood with you, if he doesn't shoot on every shoot, and if he stood with you, you're going to just miss you everything. shoot and go to pot. Like a father, like a son, isn't it? Both rubbish. Yeah, he, he is. He's a wind-up merchant. But everybody does it, but he does it better than the rest of us. No, he's just persistent. Mm -hmm. Here you go. In front. Oh. You see, you can't teach. It's no good, you see. You got to shoot it in front. You got well, to Why didn't to you? Kill. I told you to. Uh, I once remember being in, in a hotel in Scotland, and my, my very good friend Lenny, who's now dead. Uh, stopped up in the. We all went to bed, and he st stopped up by three or four o'clock in the morning, chatting the barmaid up. And my other friend, Chris Goodall, went into his room and got a packet of hobnob biscuits and put them all in his bed, knowing that when he came to bed, he would be in no fit state to probably realise. And sure enough, uh, when he went to bed, got into bed, and the, the, the kind of phrase was always after that, he'd been hobnobbed. Uh, that was good fun, and a lot of it is just that. The shooting's important in the fact that's what gets people together, 
but in many ways, like most things, it is a social event, which perhaps is a bit bizarre to some people, uh, but it is. It becomes a social event, and it what flows from that. Well, that was lucky, wasn't it? I got into game shooting because I was in a troubled relationship, and I, um, we decided to buy a dog. Uh, and I decided I want to give the dog a sense of purpose, so I started training a dog. I got into kennel club obedience, I got into dog trialling, and um, I got into the game shooting part because I was training my dog in some farmland, and a farmer collared me, and uh, instead of losing his temper with me... I really emphasised to him that he's not welcome around my fence with a wild dog. Um, he invited me to shoot as a beater. He says, can I, can I just come and watch our sitting car on the road? This was in probably June time. I said, yes, you're all right then. You, you can come and watch, thinking, well, I'll not see him again. One September night, my mother said, there's a Scotsman at the door wanting you. And it was Sandy. He says, you told, you told me to come and see you. And I thought, uh, well, I'd put my money where my, my mouth is, so I had to take him on. I said, right, a week on Saturday, be at nine o'clock in the morning. So I went along to the shoot and I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was a great day. That was my very, very first experience of shooting. I really enjoyed that day of beating. Um, it was a bit of a, a, a story of a trespasser turned gamekeeper, if you like. For shooting, dogs are a really vital part of the day. Um, they, they, they provide... Um, a service that is highly important. They do something that humans can't do um, and they provide so much um, fun and entertainment in doing so that um, I feel privileged just to have them there. I've got two golden retrievers. Um, one uh, is a male dog, uh, an older, darker dog, uh, a, a large and powerful dog. Uh, who, who can be uh, a handful, like a lot of uh, male characters are difficult to uh, control. And I have a young uh, bitch who's um, very fast and, and very good. Both dogs have good noses, good game finders, um, and it's uh, real fun watching them uh, make a detection on a bird that would not otherwise be found. Smile, Michael. <laughs> Hot shot. This, now, this gentleman, there you go. He actually got that with a catapult. Because <laughs> it was too easy with a shotgun. Get some ammo. And when he ain't got a catapult, he's got an air rifle. Yeah, you know Absolutely. Teaching Mace has been. The training side of it. It, mm. Everyone thinks it's difficult training a gun dog. Um, we got Macy uh, when I was at college. Um, she was about 10 weeks old, wasn't she? Yeah, 10 weeks old, and I, we knew that's what we wanted to do. And she's a gun dog bred And I've, I, well, it was 10, 15 minutes a day, every day, um, continuously with her. Um, and it's not a case of, oh, I've got to train her again. You enjoy it. Uh, but it is, you've, it's just time with a dog. When anyone says you've got a good dog or a bad dog, you can never blame the dog. It's, yes, it's in the genes, but most of all, it's yourself. So if the dog's not performing well, it's down to yourself. I would never ever go shooting without a dog. I'm just one of those um, um, enthusiasts who has to have a dog with them um, as part of the, uh, the, the camaraderie of the day. The dog is just important as everyone else who, who takes part in the day and they provide so much um, contribution towards uh, game finding that it's, um, for me, is highly important, it's a must. <laughs> I wouldn't have got into shooting, I don't think, if I was born and brought up in the city. I'd have been like most city dwellers, it's just yeah. fortunate. From where we were born and brought up, Dale's the same, and having the opportunity to go down the farm. So, and uh, I think it goes back to your father, your grandfather and everything. Like In our family now, all right, they'll always be game shooting. I've just got a newborn, like I said, he'll get into game shooting. Yeah. Little Freddie, he's only two weeks old, well, he's two weeks old tomorrow. Um, we didn't know what we were, what we were having. Uh, we didn't want to find out. Uh, and when we had a little... Well, we're all relieved it was human. Well, yeah, <laughs> human and healthy. But um, I'll encourage it from a very early age. As soon as he's healthy enough and strong enough to come on the shoot, I'll be bringing him. Um, just because if you bring him up in the environment uh, that we're in, 
then he, he won't he ever get into... Well, I say he won't ever, it's, it's difficult to say, but it'll discourage him from crime with that's linked with guns. If he's in the field with us from day one, then he can be brought the right And, of way. course, it'll, his mates will want to come. Yeah, well, hopefully, yeah. yeah so but, yeah, I, I, I will encourage game It'll bring the it. next generation into it. Yeah. I put a, a thousand head of game down here, and my intention is to shoot 40%. I have eight shoots, so that's four... 40% of a 1,000 is 400. 400 birds divided by 8 is 50. So when we get to 40-odd, I, I take them to a drive where there's not as many birds. One of the big issues, clearly, is the ethics of killing animals for sport. And whichever way you do, you might try and dress it up, that is what we're doing. We're, these, these birds here have been specifically put down to be killed. A lot of people just don't know anything, and why would they? They think we're all aristocracy, and we're out there just shooting everything that moves, yeah. and we don't pick the birds up. That is just out of total ignorance, and the only way to change that is for people like us to educate them and say, it's not like that. I have to make sacrifices and watch what I'm doing so I can afford to go game shooting, and every bird of every game shooter is collected and goes to the markets yeah. or into the hotel chain, we make great efforts on every shoot, and it's not just our shoot, it's every shoot nationwide. Any birds that are brought down, we will spend ages with the dogs trying to find them so that they end up where they should and they're not wasted. Before the shot, they don't realise how much rearing the birds take. They think that when you say it's a driven shoot and you explain, you stand in a line, the beats drive the birds over you, that's where they see it's murdering because the, the birds are flying for their lives and they're going to get shot. That's not true at all because you don't shoot low birds, low floppy birds, slow birds, you pick your birds and it's got to be a sporting bird and by that it's got to be a challenging bird. But that bird has been brought up from hatched, reared and looked after very, very well by the farmers, the gamekeepers, to get it to where it's at so it's had the best life possible. And it doesn't know any different. One argument would be, well, there's millions of chickens and cow, cattle and sheep killed every year. Uh, is it any different to actually kill something to eat but enjoy killing it? And there'll be a lot of people who I understand would say it's not morally defensible. Um, and that is a good argument, really. Is it defensible to kill things for pleasure? But I think so long as they are eaten. And the other benefits, which probably aren't shown, is on most shoots there will be hundreds, if not thousands, of animals that benefit from the shooting. Without shooting, the countryside would be a, a very, very sad place. I myself have planted 75 acres of trees solely for shooting. You'll get some people that say they're conservationists that just put three or four fat balls on a bird table once a week. In my, in my woods, I've got 49 species of birds, Ow, owls, wren, wrens, robins, every bird you can think of just about is in our wood. If it weren't for shooting, they just would not be there. I feed my pheasants and partridges all the year round. And when I go to a feeder in January and there's robins and blackbirds and thrushes taking the corn, I, I, I don't say, no, you're not supposed to have it, it's only for the pheasants. And a lot, a lot of birds and other wildlife wouldn't survive if it weren't for shooting. A Kentucky Fried Chicken is 38 days old. It's never seen the sun, the moon, the stars, never pecked a worm. Never roosted in a tree, never saw dawn, never saw dusk. They kept at four to the square metre. They harvested by machine, killed by machine. I put a hundred pheasants in here. If I shoot 40 of them, I'm delighted. The only difference between me and them is they pay for somebody else to do the killing, where I do my own killing. I kill what I eat. Knock, we're not... We don't wind up in that part of the line, you? It just happens, doesn't it? I won't say we do it a lot, but it does happen. It'd be pretty boring if we didn't, wouldn't it? Mate? Well, yeah, I suppose it would. If we were going around, all right, our lad, yes, thanks, Dad. We do, you know, we do, we do have a go at yeah. each other, but yeah, 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 but not overly so. And also, it's, <coughs> if I'm stood next to him in, in the line, and I've got a bird coming over me and he's got one going for him, I'll try and shoot his every day of the week. If I miss, I don't care. But as long as I'm trying to shoot his birds, because mm. there's no better than shooting his Because you're not really supposed to do it, so no. that's why we do it. No. Smile, Charlie, you don't shoot like a twat.com. <laughs> Shut up. 
Right, what we'll do is, when they're not ready, I'll slip yeah. these in one well, or two. I'll slip one into Richard. Well, I'll slip you? one into Richard there, look. Yeah. Okay? So, or, or do I give these two? No, no one but Richard. Oh, what do you mean? I'll, just slip, I'll them slip them in, in when they're not what, Well, you know what they go like, don't you? Yes, we all do. <laughs> <laughs> you can't call them blacks. These are good quality. <laughs> good quality. It's on yeah. film, this. I'll you can't say drive. I'm shooting blacks, can he? You can't say yeah, that, I'll can he? <laughs> Chris, Hello. that's on film. You can't say you're shooting blacks on film. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely a, so a social shooter. And the older I get, the more social I get. When I first started shooting, we used to start here at half past eight in the morning. We used to have 11 guns and we used to finish it nearly dark at night. I wanted as big a bag as possible. And it was a numbers game. We wanted as many birds a day as possible. But now we've moved on from that. We go for breakfast in the morning. We don't start well probably quarter to 10 and we finish at three o'clock and we have a meal at night. As I've got older, actually pulling the trigger has become less and, and less of it as, as, as to when I was younger. The, the social side of it, a day out with my friends now, it is, as you get older, is more important all the time. Especially as you lose, especially when you've lost friends and you just realise how valuable they were to, her, to you, it makes you appreciate the friends you've got a bit more. If I was rang up and said, can you make the, the team of guns up? I will always ask who I'm shooting with because for me, it's not about it, of course, it's about pulling the trigger and bringing the birds down, but it's about the day. So with Roberts, every single person there is a friend. So it's mm. a day out with your friends, and there's not many days where you can say, I've had 20 of my friends there, including the beaters and the guns. You just don't get it. Mm. But it's it's a definitely a social side, Roberts, yeah. and it? it's a family-run shoot, and it's, it's not run commercially. It's a non-profit-making hobby, if you like. Robert does it because it's his hobby, and Robert only invites his friends and family and people he likes, and it works very well, doesn't yeah. it? Definitely. They, they are my closest friends, yeah, without, without a doubt, yeah. I have to put my hand, in, my hand over my heart and say that. I've, I can honestly say I've got no closer friends in, other than the people I shoot with. It's the experience that would never be forgotten. It's just a fabulous day with fabulous people in fabulous places. Mm -hmm.